Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Shrine is absent. Mr. Brady is absent. There is a quorum. Also like the record to reflect that Councilman Miller is in attendance. Thank you. Any public comment related to the agenda? Uh, no, Madam Chair, no one is signed in. And we have minutes from this um, second day of May. Can I have a, a motion to adopt minutes, approve minutes? I'm moving. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have one item. Refer to committee. Can you read that, please? Resolution number 2018-0110, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE1600242 with United Labor Agency for operation of the Workforce Service Center. Oh, thank you. Um, the contract is federally funded under the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act administered by the Federal Department of Labor. This contract was competitively procured through a request for proposal process. Funding comes to us on a state fiscal year, so the funds come July through June. Um, we are seeking to enter into the contract for state fiscal year 2018, July 2018 through June 30th, 2019. We have yet to receive our official Workforce Investment Act allocations for next fiscal year. So we are coming to you right now with very conservative contract amount. It represents 75% of United Labor Agency's existing contract. We anticipate getting, we got planning numbers, which were pretty good by the way, so we're very happy about that. Um, but we anticipate getting the official numbers in the next couple of weeks but we can't move forward with a contract. It's not fair to the provider or the agency to have them work without a contract. So we're moving forward with a um, conservative amount of $2.5 million. Their current contract is over $3.2 million this current year. So we're, we're doing that. We'll have a contract in place July 1st. We anticipate getting the official numbers no later than mid-June, and then we'll negotiate the contract, the terms, but we're doing this to be fair to our contractor. The scope of the contract, it's, it's two parts. United Labor Agency provides services to individuals seeking jobs, and they provide services to employers. I do have David Meganhart, the CEO, for United Labor Agency here if there are specific questions, but just to like summarize, what do they do? They operate the one stop for us at 1910 Carnegie Avenue. This one stop is available to the general public. The general public can come and look for jobs. In inside the one stop are 10 other programs, employers, I should say programs, education and workforce programs operated by the state of Ohio, um, which is Wagner Pizer, um, veterans programs. We also have the state disabilities, OOD. We have Cuyahoga Community College. We have Job Corps. We have CEOGC, CMHA, Title V is AARP. I know I'm forgetting somebody, but um, those programs bring certain um, element, aspire GED. So we provide a myriad, a whole range of services to job seekers. Beside, and United Labor Agency coordinates those services and who the individuals refer to and get them to the right place. United Labor Agency also serves in adults eligible under the Workforce Innovation Act. So individuals low income or individuals laid off. Um, I do want to say that the program results are really strong. We are looking at the second quarter results today and of the states told they served about 9,000 adults to date and United Labor Agency has served over 20% of them and 30% of the total job placements to date have come from this area, Cuyahoga County. By the way, we're a little under 11% of the population. We only get 12% of the funding. So the results have been strong to date. 
Besides operating at 1910 Carnegie, we're also involved in libraries. So we moved out of, we had two comprehensive centers, one at 1910 Carnegie and one at 11699 Brook Park. In order to be good stewards of the money and save money, we did close down Brook Park, but it, in place of that, we're being more available in the neighborhood. So we're in eight, eight libraries, I think, right now, and we're in three work opportunity centers, Quincy, Old Brooklyn, and Virgil Brown. So we have a presence there to serve individuals. Also, we provide services to employers. That's how we have so many um, placements, understanding the needs of the employer to really rely on us so we can affect a good job placement. What do they need? Understanding what they need and bringing strong candidates to them. With that said, I welcome any questions. Good job. Fast Thanks. with a lot of info. Any questions from the committee? Yeah. Mr. Jones and then, and then Councilman Miller. Okay. So you, the last comment you made was you help uh, with local companies uh, and their I guess HR needs or employment needs. Mm -hmm. uh, how many businesses have you we served over the last maybe contract? However you want to qualify it. I will turn it over to Dave Megidhart. Mm -hmm. uh, so the last contract uh, we've had over fifteen hundred hiring employers. Employers. So, yeah. So how many um, uh, residents have you helped to, to gain employment through these? 1500 so right now this year um, we're closing in on 3,000 placements uh, it's a little bit down because we moved twice so we moved out of the, our uh, one stop that was at Bolivar uh, 1910 Carnegie didn't open up until five months later so our traffic was down some this year but we're still as Frank said um, we're still very strong as compared to the state and we will probably hit or be very close to 3,000 people okay I, and I ask because I remember back over the years when before it was Ohio means jobs in the previous name, employment um, connection, yeah. employment connections, and and you said well, uh, you, you changed your model where you determine what the employer needed, uh, and how many how many individuals they needed, and you match you trained the necessary equal amount to the position, and and the That's right. the, um, the rate went up as far as those earning those positions or earning those jobs. That's right. That's right. So if you've if you've had fifteen hundred. Uh, potential employers seeking your help. I'm trying to imagine the scale of of your work. Uh, you're basically learning the 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 job set needed of 1,500 different companies in this city. Correct. That's correct. So okay. we do we do re, uh, recruitments almost every day on at the sites or in the libraries. Um, uh -huh. We have a team of uh, staff that their whole job is to talk to uh, companies every day and match uh, match uh, employees with those jobs. Mm -hmm. So I, I was contacted by a church in my district who has a uh, an agreement with the local company and uh, and they they committed to hiring x amount of members of the church. Uh, but what I could imagine is your services playing a, a vital role where they would not only hire just within the church but right. those in the community as well. Right. And that church could serve as a kind of a facilitator of, of your service and, and you understand the, at least a contractual agreement this company has with the church. Right. Uh, maybe that's something we could discuss offline. That would be great. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Miller, Councilman Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to, to Mr. Brickner, what percentage of the money is being spent on the employer side and what percent is being spent on the worker side? If I remember correctly, it's about one-third employer side, two-third job seeker side. And uh, what relationship is there, if any, between this, this program and the uh, step-up program that's being run by the administration? We are currently working with the Department of Development trying to coordinate services. So our, our business team could talk about the step up program, but we just had a meeting after our workforce development board meeting last 
week to discuss how do we move that forward? How, how does our business team know what to market? And how do the step-up um, team know what to market so we can kind of coordinate um, the benefits to the employers? Okay. And uh, with unemployment at, uh, at low levels right now, and the job market strong, is that making it easier for you to achieve placements? No, I think it's making it more difficult because we're seeing a more barriered individual coming to us. Um, mm -hmm. I had mentioned earlier that we got preliminary um, planning numbers for next year, and we sure hope that's true because I think that some of the individuals coming to us don't have the skills needed for the available jobs right now. So if we get the amounts that we are anticipating, we will be able to devote more dollars to training to help reduce that skill gap, to make the individuals more employable. And uh, what percentage of, of the people that were served in, in the most recent year are from the reentry community? And uh, and are you finding it? Are, are you able to place them at the same rate as the general population, or is the success rate less in that community? Well, I'm going to go to our annual report. You know, and our annual report indicated that of our 3,800 adult placements last year. 493 were ex-offenders. So that's a pretty strong amount, over 10%. No, I don't think that they're receiving the same income. Um, however, I think that most of the jobs they are retaining, our retention rate is very strong. And uh, what percentage of the uh, people that come in the door seeking service are from that community? It's also about ten percent. About so the it's same. Consistent, yeah. So, uh, so your your placement rate is the same. It is. That's encouraging. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm. How is the Whitlatch building working out? Oh, it's a beautiful facility. It's really nice. People, I think it's it's a great it's a great flagship for the system. So. And, and you have library systems um, at both east and west, north south. Yes. Okay, and. This is a third amendment to a contract we originally approved in 2016. Yes. And I understand your, your intention is to have this the last amendment, just to pr make sure every, and thank you for having a contract instead of just operating with that one. Right. So, um, but after this, then you, are you going to? Um, we're, we're intending to amend the contract one more time, just not to extend it, but for the true dollar the value of it. But next year, we have to have an RFP. We have to competitively bid this service again. OK. So we'll expect that in an adjustment for the actual dollars. And I think there's time to, to read this. Are you looking for suspension, or can we read this th three times? Because your effective amendment date would be the end of June. Mm -hmm. So if we can. Madam Clerk, will we be able to get this on third reading um, before the end of June? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to thank you. Any other questions? So we'll, when do you anticipate coming back with the adjustment? Well, it depends on when we get the final allocations from the state of Ohio. I would anticipate that we should within the next two weeks. I think it was mid-June last year. So it should be it should be a later than July. At least we introduce it for... Uh, the council, but the earlier, if I could have it by July 1st, that would be great. I don't know. Um, okay. Depends on when we get the notice from the state. Okay, so we'll see you relatively soon. Yes. Okay, thanks so much. Thank if, you. if we don't have any other questions, I'm going to make a motion um, to send this to the next full council meeting for, I guess, second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the ayes have it, and this will be first on for second reading. I don't think you need to come to that, and we'll have you done before the end of June. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't have any miscellaneous business, and we'll adjourn. Thanks, everybody.